Hi, this is Professor Dan Kerner. This is uh, another video with our Math 120 statistics class. In this section, we're going to talk about section 1.2 following our textbook, which is about observational studies and designed experiments. So we're going to try to distinguish between those two, talk about something called lurking variables, and then talk about different types of observational studies. So let's, first, let's talk about observational studies and designed experiments. So observational studies is just observing. Uh, the most common example here is just doing a survey. If you do a survey, you're not doing anything to the people. You're just waiting to see uh, what, how they respond to your survey. Where a designed experiment is you apply some treatment to try to figure out what the effect of that treatment is. Now here's the main thing, why this is important. When you do an observational study, if you find a relationship between two variables, because you just observe it, you can only claim that those two things are associated, not that one thing caused another. But if you do an experiment and you randomly assign people, and so there's a mix of people in, in two different groups, um, if you find that when you apply your treatment to one group, there's a difference versus the other group without the treatment, you can claim that your treatment caused that. This is really, really important. When you do an observational study, you can't claim that one thing caused another. You have to have an experiment to do that. One of the main reasons is something called a lurking variable. So a lurking variable is one that affects both variables you're interested in, the one that you think might be the cause and then the one that you think might be the result. But sometimes there's a lurking variable that either you don't know about or that maybe you're not acknowledging that affects both of them that's actually the cause there. So I have an example here. Um, I've got a research project going with a cohort of students here. Currently had um, uh, 10 students in that particular section. So if my students end up doing really well, can I claim it's because of the interventions we're doing? Now if you think about that, I've got some interventions I'm doing with this cohort of students that are taking all these classes together and there are 10 students in the class. The problem with me claiming any significant results is they only have 10 students. Maybe the small class size is affecting it and that's why they're doing so well. So that's a lurking variable that I can't really control for because I didn't do an experiment and actually do another cohort maybe of the same classes and not do an intervention and also only have 10 students. So it's hard for me to determine that any interventions that we did, any special projects or whatever, that those were the cause of that difference. All right, so uh, let's talk about types of observational studies. Um, we're going to mention these here. They're good things to know to have been exposed to, um, but we're not going to be, I don't really test a lot on these. I think that's something that if these ever come up later in your studies, the fact that you've been exposed to them uh, is sufficient enough for me. So a cross-sectional study, this is basically a survey. This is where you collect data just at a certain point in time. And that's it. So you just have that one point in time that you collect data and you're done. That's cross-sectional. Case control is, this can still be a survey, but there's one particular characteristic you're looking at. Uh, and so, say you're looking at, um, I'm trying to think of something medical, drinking soda, and you're trying to look at what effect that might have. Now it's kind of unethical to say, okay, we're going to tell these 200 kids to drink two cans of, I don't know, Pepsi or whatever. I don't want to endorse anything. So two cans of some type of soda for the next 20 years. And then this 200 kids are not going to drink any soda. And then we're going to see who gets sick and dies by the time they're 50 or whatever. Like that's unethical. So what you could do is you could, you could collect um, a bunch of volunteers and look at, hey, these parents don't let their kids drink soda until age 10. Let's look at what kind of health effects they have. And now we've got these kids and they're 16. Um, so let's look at their health at 16 and see. And then we've got these other families, like they let their kids drink pop at, you know, at age five and, and every once in a while they would let them do that. So let's look at those kids at 16 and see. So we didn't force it on them. We're just kind of comparing the two groups and it, we can't really draw, again, we can't really draw a causation there, but we could see, well, there may have been some other factors, but looking at these two, the group that drank soda had this effect and the group that, group that didn't did not have that effect or whatever. 
So that's a, a case control. A, a cohort is when people are tracked over a period of time. So you start with a bunch of volunteers and then they're tracked over time. Um, and then you might look at the ones within that group that did what you were interested in and the ones that did not. Um, and so um, that's called a cohort study. So if we kind of summarize here key points, we've got the, this really important result that only designed experiments can claim causation. That's really important. The reason is because of lurking variables that can affect both variables you're interested in. And then we have these three types of observational studies, cross-sectional case control and cohort. So thanks for watching. Um, got links to the previous video and the next video up above. So feel free to take a look at those and make a comment below if you're interested. Um, if you want to note a specific time measurement or a time point in the video, you can just type in 6 colon 23 or something like that. That would, that would note 6 minutes and 23 seconds into the video.